Now we're going to continue with rational expressions and functions, but this time we're going to be adding and subtracting rational expressions. Uh, let's begin by doing review of adding and subtracting rational numbers again. So this part is just work with rational numbers, adding and subtracting rational numbers. You know that in order to add fractions or rational numbers, what you need to have is uh, the same denominator so that you can add the numerators. Well, suppose we had the uh, following problem. Add 3 fifths minus 10 fifths. Since this already has, uh, these two numbers already have the same denominator, we can then say this is 3 minus 10 over 5, which gives us a negative 7 fifths. So that's easy enough if we have the same denominator. But what happens when we don't have the same denominator? And what I would like you to do is be sure and uh, think about this problem, because if you know what's going on in this problem, then you won't have uh, trouble with rational expressions. With rational expressions, uh, things get uh, complicated because we won't have just simply constants both in the numerators and denominators. We're going to have expressions in terms of a variable. So let's get the procedure down here. The first thing that you need to do is to find what's called the lowest common denominator. And in order to find that, we're going to call, first of all, we're going to call this, we're going to call it the, let me write it first, denominator, uh, we're going to call it the LCD. Okay, so we're going to, anytime we say LCD, that means lowest common denominator. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to factor each of the denominators in the problem that we had, factor them completely into prime numbers. So we know 24 is 6 times 4, but 6 is the same thing as 2 times 3, uh, and 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. So we have 2 times 3 times 2 times 2. 15 is the same thing as 3 times 5. And 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5, but we need to factor that 4 into prime numbers as 2 times 2 times 5. Now that we factored every denominator completely, the LCD then is something that's going to be large enough but not too large. That means it's going to be a multiple of each of the denominators here, but not be a number uh, bigger than it needs to be, the smallest multiple that we can have. So in order to be a multiple of 24, it's going to have to have a 2 factor, a 3 factor, and then two more 2 factors, right? In order to be a factor of, three, of 15, it's going to have to have a 3, but we've already got a 3, so let's not put one more in. But we don't have a 5, so we'll need to include the 5. Then finally, when we go to the 20, we need two 2 factors, but we've got plenty of 2s. We've got three 2 factors, so we've got enough. And we need a 5, but we've already got a 5. So the lowest common denominator, then, is a product of these numbers. And what is this number? It's going to be 6 times 4 times 5. That's the same thing as 24 times 5, and that's the same thing as 120. This 120 is the smallest multiple of 24, of 15, and 20. And one way of uh, seeing that it's a multiple of each of these is just to cover up the extra factors. For 24, we need three 2 factors and a 3, so let's cover up the 5. There's 24 right there. For 15, if we cover up all the 2s, we, we're left with 3 times 5, and so the 120 is a factor, is a multiple of 3 times 5. And the same thing with 20. 20 is... Uh, two twos and a five, well those are these right here, so we can cover up the two and the three and we find the twenty there. So a hundred and twenty is a multiple of each of these numbers, but it's as small as it, it can possibly be. That's what we want. So we're going to be following this procedure then when we have rational expressions. So let's begin with an example. So what we're doing now is adding and subtracting rational expressions.
keep in mind we have rational expressions. That means that in order for those expressions to be defined, the denominators cannot be zero. We're assuming that that's going to be the case, and we're assuming that we're th throwing off those values of x which give us zeros as the denominators. And just to really quickly review what that means, x plus 7 cannot be zero. Therefore, what we don't want is x to be equal to a negative 7. So we'll throw that out, and then we'll continue with the problem. So here we have a subtraction of two rational expressions, but in this case, it's all it's a quick job here because we've got the same denominator. So from what we know, since we have a common denominator, all that we need to do is to subtract the numerators in this case. x squared minus 49 over that common denominator, x plus 7. But now we've got an expression and we re need to write it in lowest terms. And so in order to go uh, to find the lowest term uh, for this uh, expression here, we're going to factor the numerator and factor the denominator. Well, the numerator is the difference of two squares, and so that will factor as x minus 7 times x plus 7. The denominator is already as, uh, as well as we can factor it. It's just an x plus 7 there. It's already done. So now we'll look for common factors. We know that we have an x plus 7 in both the numerator and denominator. So this uh, uh, subtraction problem of rational expressions just simply becomes x minus 7. So that was pretty easy. Now let's consider a problem that's a little bit more involved.